One man is given unlimited attempts to beat Magnus Carlsen in chess. Another man is given unlimited attempts to beat prime Mike Tyson in a boxing match. Who would complete their task faster? So I saw the, Mag the Magnuson comment. Although it might have been divorced from context. I saw that posed on like the chess subreddit. Whereas like you can try infinite amounts of times yeah. to work it out. Surely your condition against Mike Tyson would get dramatically worse every time. Well, no, you reset. Every time okay. at All the right. end of every round, you reset. But you, ha you have information about the previous games, but I don't they think, do not. I don't think information helps you when <laughs> Mike Tyson is beating the shit out of you. No, no. Okay. <laughs> that is true. Like, sorry, this is true. But my issue with the morons in the comments is that they also, so they therefore say like, therefore Magnus Carlsen, it's like you're never going to beat him. Like well, bo both cases, you are never going to win. Well, this is the thing. This was a big argument on the chess subreddit mm. because they there was a, basically a division between people who were kind of like, you are never, ever going to be able to beat. I don't know if Magnuson was the example, but it was mm. like a chess grandmaster. You're never going to be able to beat them as like a layman Yeah. versus ones where it's like they're going to slip up. Basically, the idea is that, A, you're going to learn their general sense because yeah. with the grandmasters, you can't actually predict their games Yeah. because to be a chess grandmaster, you've got to kind of like have like a bundle of strategies yeah. that you do. But then like, but regardless of that, they're going to slip up eventually. It might take you millions of years of repetitions. Yeah, well, it, but it's going to happen. Whereas Str Mike Tyson won't. And, and also you'll get better at chess. Yeah. Like the, the educational value of going against the grandmaster, you're going to learn a bit about how they play. Look, unfortunately- much like Mike Tyson is like a physical specimen who it's true that you will never learn by being punched in the head by Mike Tyson. You won't learn to be better at boxing. I don't think, I guess you'd slowly. You'll learn, you'll learn a few things about life. Though, <laughs> I reckon. Um, his brain is made for the game of chess in the same way that Mike Tyson's body and brain is made for boxing. Maybe you're right. Maybe my time, once again, my time horizon isn't long enough, I think but I see that and I'm like, they're your, both impossible. Ex no, no, no. Extend your time horizon. I'm in the field where I think, cause you'd learn little things about like, you know, it might take you 10,000 years. You'd be like, oh, what does Magnuson do when he's feeling stressed about X? You know, what does whatever. Whereas, Mike, like, you spawn in with Mike Tyson and he punches you so hard, <laughs> your nose shoots out the back of your brain. Again, <laughs> again and again. Again, for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> there was one sensible comment that was, if we're just talking about Mike Tyson purgatory versus Magnus Carlson purgatory, I'll take Carlson. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. <laughs>We're back at the trough again, Raf. Yes, the content trough. TikTok. TikTok. No, the TikTok trough. The TikTok trough. Maybe the final edition of TikTok ban watch. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think I, I think there's, there's going to be so obviously TikTok ban watch will end when it TikTok happens. when TikTok is banned. Yes, and when you go to the app store and uh, and search TikTok, you get nothing. Yeah. But I reckon there'll be a... Or oh, wouldn't Americans do at least. When it's decided who will own TikTok moving forward or wh what happens, will that still be TikTok ban watch or that won't be TikTok ban watch anyway? It's a TikTok ban has been watched, I suppose. So it could be. I guess it could be the final one. It could be the final one. We don't Especially know. Especially if I they guess. rename it. If it gets, if it gets renamed to like um, Microsoft... Um, Teams yeah. Live? You know how Microsoft owns that like video editing software? Yeah, called? Clip Clip Champ. Clip Champ. Yeah, yeah. It's actually an Australian company they acquired. Yes. It's like they a, could they could just take that name and apply it, rename TikTok to Clip Champ. I like Clip Champ. And, and give it like the general sort of office suite design, mm -hmm. just so it looks like SharePoint, <laughs> except it's TikTok. Anyway, all right. We're gonna, I think we're gonna... that would be good. I think that it'd be really cool if like in Microsoft Teams. You just had a community tab yep. thing on the, on the click side. Click on that and it's, it just starts just, doing it's videos. Just TikTok. Starts doing the vertical videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd, that'd, be good. that'd be good. And maybe it's like it's time that TikTok's user base moves into the workforce. This does, maybe we're going too early on this, but this well, does well, speak to why Microsoft should buy TikTok. And that's what we're talking about today. Well, that's, yeah, totally. We're back into the realm of TikTok. We predicted in our Christmas episode the downround extravaganza experience, the downround experience. Sorry. Yes. Um, we predicted that TikTok would be banned by the end of the year. Yes. We also predicted that a year prior. We did, but <laughs> we, we renewed the bet. There's nothing wrong with that. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. And we've doubled our money. Yeah. 
you know, this meets the criteria. The US had passed a bill through one head through the House of Representatives earlier to ban TikTok, mm-hmm. but for a variety of reasons, it was they didn't think it was going to make its way through the Senate and get signed by President Biden, blah, 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 blah. But a new bill got absolutely hurtled through Mm. the House of Reps and then the Senate and then now signed by President Biden, Mm. which does what we've described before. TikTok, your favorite social media app Mm -hmm. where you can see people in hang glider accidents. You can see 17-year-olds dancing. You can see like Fortnite videos with like a robot voice reading Reddit posts over the top of it. You can see anything your mind desires you can see on there. Ten minutes of someone failing to comply with the police officer <laughs> and eventually getting a ticket. A, a live stream of someone drinking themselves to death in their apartment. <laughs> There's a lot of beautiful content on there. They have a year to divest, mm. to sell off their assets to an American company or the entire app will be banned in the United States without getting too tangled in the legal weeds because it's not super interesting. But the previous bill gave them six months. Yeah. This was one of the hang- one of the points that they were sort of hanging up on was the idea that, oh, that's too quick. They're not going to be able to seal a deal, you know, whatever. 12 months was a bit of a compromise. And they, they wrapped it up in a package of bills which basically handed out foreign aid to – Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, which some right wing elements in the American Congress and Senate were not super happy with at least one element of that, which is giving money to Ukraine. But they this sweetened the deal. They were like, if you wave through this $95 billion aid package, mm. we'll ban that damn app. Yeah. Yeah. Fully functioning democracy we have over there where <laughs> the banning of. A social media app is tied up with, like, giving fucking... Missiles to Israel. (laughs) You know. Anyway, so, but the point is that it actually did accelerate through the House of Reps and the Senate, and President Biden has signed it. So, technically, that law is now in effect, Mm. and TikTok has 12 months. Which obviously puts it past the election, which is, you know, probably somewhat important as well. Yeah. In that you don't want a month before even two weeks before the election, just like people having their favorite social media app ripped away from them. Well, that, well, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll totally get into that. But it was also a big deal with the, because, you know, people who aren't paying super close attention to this might be like, well, hang on a minute. Donald Trump banned TikTok. Yeah. What the fuck happened there? Yeah. And aside from like the top line issue of he he sort of lost interest very quickly in it, that was also like a transfer of power thing. Trump banned it by executive order. TikTok sued. The US government said, hey, we haven't given enough time to respond to this. A judge said that could be true. And then Donald Trump lost the election. Mm. It sort of faded out. Yeah. Um, But now we're back on the the treadmill again. Although it does seem like TikTok are a lot more concerned now than they were then. Well, no, no. It it looks like it's happening now. It's back in the courts again. Like there is, will be. There'll be court challenges. But at the end of the day, I mean, I guess courts can do this shit over in America if it's like a constitutional issue. They can overturn laws. When you've had both houses of friggin' their legislative bodies signing off on it and the president, yes, the Supreme Court could be like, actually, it is a violation of free speech, I guess, but it's unlikely, that, that, right? I mean, they they could. And I think, like, you know, TikTok has a good chance of, has a, has a chance at least of making it happen. And they're definitely gearing up. You know, there was a big uh, Financial Times reported there was a big internal rally where the um, US TikTok boss was like, you know, this is the beginning, not the end of the process. We're going to take this to the courts. They're like lawyering up. They're building like a legal team to take this all away. So, you know, the down round prediction may not well happen. No. I'm just softening the ground for us to double it again. Yeah. For 2025. Pro tip, you can't lose. You can't lose. If you just keep... Just Doubling get, up your bet on red, eventually <laughs> it'll hit red and you're fine. You're gonna you're gonna win. The only people who lose in gambling are the ones who tap out too early. Mm. It's just mad. That's an that's an official down around stance. So basically, they have to divest. Mm. We're gonna get into like who they might potentially sell to. Yes, you know, with this sort of stuff. But we should also talk about the fact that after this happened, there was like sort of a or during the process of it occurring, there was a big sort of revolt from TikTok. The um, TikTok CEO, old matey in Singapore, mm. did like a 
a really bad TikTok video, mm. which was like, I mean, bad in the sense that it's like it was just not very well done. It did, didn't align with how people make TikToks. Yeah, it did more so than say, you know, Zuckerberg doing the um, VI headset thing. At least the TikTok one, he like they edited it quite hard, like hard cuts. Yeah. As opposed to just like someone blathering on in front of a camera. But yes, even I lost interest and I'm, I have, my attention levels are off the charts. <laughs> your attention span is not being destroyed by being on your phone all day. I can literally watch grass grow. I think it's fascinating. That's a miracle of life, right? Uh, yeah, but he basically did a address where he was like, this is a ban. I guess there were some people saying that it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, cause the argument is it's not a ban because we're just asking them to sell to an American company. Like, why? Yeah, yeah, totally. How's, that's not a ban. It's not being banned. No one's having their TikTok taken off them. So it's being forcibly removed from the owners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're right. expropriating it, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was very much and very aggressively against the concept. And this led to a bit of online discourse from people that were like, well, for the TikTok executives, they should be pleased about this because it's an exit, essentially. Mm. The TikTok CEO and the other people who are really so aggressively against TikTok being divested, this is a payday for them. Well, yes and no, because like at the end of the day, as we've discussed many times before, your job as a CEO is determined by like the board. Like That's the right. board, and if the board say, no, I, I won't do an accent. <laughs> <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> I saw the look on your face as well. <laughs> if, if the board say we don't want to divest, you got to you got to represent you, the, the will of the board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. And I I don't necessarily take this argument, but this is what everyone was talking about. Yeah. They were like, if this wasn't an influence operation, why are these these guys so hard on it not being divested? Yeah, but, I I, I kind of hate. Like I heard this as well. It's like, well, it's they've really been Shanghai here. I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> If they, Sorry, you're quoting someone. You're quoting a hypothetical person. Exactly. Like, if they do sell, then we're a bit like, well, maybe it wasn't that big an issue after all. But if they refuse to sell, then that proves our point, you know, that they really were just using it for an influence operation. It's like, no, it doesn't. Like, you can't just, like, demand a company a company sell to new owners and, like, not kind of push back against it. Like, that's, that's a really weird mindset. That's just like, oh, well, if they if they don't sell, it's proving that actually that like this is a, a foreign influence operation. And it's, yeah. Well, they, like maybe, I mean, friggin' Anglo-American or whatever just refused to sell to BHP. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The counterclaim you can make to that and other people did as well. But it was like, you know, if China had passed a law and demanded, it's, it's kind of hard to use a social media example because they don't allow many of them. Yeah. But, you know. If Apple. Yeah, Apple or Tesla or something had to divest its local operation. Again, it's kind of hard to pull the example because anything with manufactured goods doesn't really work because they, mm. they just stop selling there. Yeah. But like, you know, a platform where there's a whole bunch of content, mm. it's also very hard to imagine a product where like it's an American-made internet platform that has a ton of Chinese users. Yeah, I mean like HubSpot or something. <laughs> yeah, like some, CRM. Sort of, <laughs> some sort of yeah, CRM or e-commerce e play or something, some infrastructural layer doesn't really work. So I get, I, but if we're dabbling in the world of hypotheticals, a world where China said, you need to divest a huge amount of this, sell it to a Chinese company, yeah. along with, you know, the IP, although as we'll talk about, that's not necessarily included. You must do that. Americans would be unhappy about that too. I don't know. It's kind of hard to, to untangle, but the fact of the matter is, they're holding strong. They're like, we don't want to sell this shit. Yeah. We want to stay operational in the US with our current ownership, which is obviously ByteDance over in the in China, mm. owns TikTok. Allegedly, it's all separate. In our last episode, we talked about how um, they have a, a system that they call Project Texas, which is all about domiciling TikTok's data in the US under the auspices of Oracle. You know, check it out and make sure it's all okay. Audit the source code. And as we probably mentioned, as we mentioned in the last episode, it's very explicit that misinformation or disinformation about Gaza, Israel is, is like one of the things that, it, that really kind of provoked this or, or knocked it over the line, specifically being like, Te there can't possibly be that many American teenagers who were pro-Palestine. It couldn't possibly be. Happen without, with it. yeah. So it is, it is kind of funny that that was the thing that kicked it off because mm. as with every other 
story about social media, that's sort of just like drifted away. No one's really talking about that anymore. Now it's all about college campuses and, and shit like that. Yeah. So what, what you know, whatever is whatever excuse they can find for why so many like young Americans are pro Palestine, um, they'll be happy to to surf that for a while. Mm. But again, you know, at the time the Palestine thing was an excuse as well. It was just like yeah, yeah. the vibes are not right. Yeah, yeah. We don't like it, folks. We don't like We're it. We're supposed to be the social media guys. We're just, yeah. And I, I said this like a year and a half ago. If I was America brain, I would ban it just because yeah, it yeah, doesn't they, feel good. Yeah, that, they get, like, they're getting their clock clean. The Chinese whatever. who, like, we have decided are our adversary, they're entertaining our children. Don't know about that, Chief. Like, I, I get American brain. Like, if I was American brain, I would do it. Just yeah, because yeah. for no real reason. Just other than just, I don't like this. Yeah, vibes are off. Don't like it. Um, yeah. As I said, but, I don't think that that justifies thing. I don't think that fits in with, like, any of the kind of American kind of capitalist power. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical, but, but I get it. You know, we're in the era of industrial policy, shoring up American industry. Yeah, yeah. You know, even if American industry in this case, we're not talking about U.S. steel. We're yeah. talking about Facebook. Yeah, economic Meta. decoupling, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, as other people have pointed out as well, it is very vibes-oriented. There's no hard evidence that's been provided for any of this stuff. I mean, there's circumstantial evidence. There's like, you know, the classic sort of like censoring Tiananmen Square content. Like yeah. you, there are little bits and pieces that have filtered through. But in terms of like massive Chinese influence operation converting the way that American TikTok users think and do, not a whole lot of hard evidence has been provided. Mm. But then again, I don't know. There's a lot of influence operations that have happened over the past 100 years yes but exactly. there's no evidence has been provided in the end of it I, wh- whatever this is the what this is the dark art of spycraft and substitute subterfuge folks yeah which i know intimately <laughs> and i know nothing about okay well that's the way i like it <laughs> <laughs> um, but i think it'd be fun to talk about the pros and cons of who would buy it and why yeah well i mean before we even talk about who there's also the fact that and this has come up a lot what before we talk about the who, let's talk about the what. Well, the what. Well, that's it. Exactly. The law doesn't dictate what the deal should look like. Yeah. It was literally just like divest TikTok and the parties can work out what that means. Yeah. So there's a few different ways that they could do it. One, they could literally just like sell the app TikTok to a buyer, which means that everyone that uses TikTok, whether you're in the United States or you know Brazil or Australia mm-hmm. or Indonesia, I assume they have TikTok. I haven't looked into it. That, that all gets carted off to whoever decides to buy it. Yeah. HubSpot. <laughs> when HubSpot buys TikTok, every user goes on. Maybe tick, maybe ByteDance keeps Douyin, which is like the Chinese TikTok variant, yeah. which is basically the same but with a, a bunch of differences. And that's it. We're completely split off. Yeah. Pretty unlikely they would do that. No. Why the hell would they get rid of – because still the American audience, there's like 180 million American TikTok users. Mm. Big portion of the population, but only a fraction of how many people use TikTok globally. Mm. Are they really going to hand off everybody just because America's chucking a fit? Probably not. Mm. So then it comes down to how do you split the rest of the business well, up? And it's worth saying China made laws specifically when Trump originally announced the TikTok ban that stopped like the overseas sale of digital assets such as AI algorithms or whatever, which basically was like, if you buy TikTok, you don't get the algorithm for like the content recommendation algorithm. Yeah. So that's the thing. How do you split up the rest of it? And do they get the TikTok algorithm? Mm. Cause this is, and here's, this is, this is where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be on one. Mm-hmm. Go off like, King. Back in 2019, when they were originally talking about Divert, like just forcing TikTok to sell. Mm. Maybe the TikTok algorithm was so far ahead or far ahead enough of the other platforms that like it's it was unconscionable mm. that you could buy TikTok without it or that TikTok would want to part with it. Mm. But it's like, is it really that much better than what whatever Meta has been able to cook up with Reels, for yeah, example? Yeah. Is it really that much better yeah. than whatever their 500 billion H100 chips are powering. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I think that it's almost objectively true that the content on TikTok is better than Reels, but that is yeah. that more just the fact that there's way more content there's and t- better t- content on TikTok than there is on Reels. T- I find it hard to believe that in 2024, TikTok has some sort of secret source in what it serves you no, that, no, that I mean, is dramatically better. Fundamentally, I mean, it might not even be that complex an algorithm, right? Like, yeah. 
again, I'm not a dev, but it's just trying to see your interaction with all the previous content you watched and then recommend you content that people very much like you who also liked similar content to before liked. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, you know, they're innovations with things like the video looping and how many times you're watching it, yeah, yeah. you know, how you interacted, how fast you swiped away from a video were signals. As I said, Reels does that too. Like that's not very hard. Yeah, as you say, it doesn't yeah. seem that crazy now to have a good content recommendation algorithm based on like well, video. Well, especially now that every site on the internet has followed TikTok's lead yeah. and has tried to create a recommendation engine. I don't, I'm not, I, as you say, if you spend an hour on Reels and you spend an hour on TikTok, you will know that TikTok is still generally better. Mm. But, you know, is that just a data set quality thing in the sense that there are a lot more TikTok videos? I mean, like, you know, X, every, every single platform has a recommendation algorithm now based on like a neural net, right? Like, well, yeah, because YouTube, Shorts, X, like, X a- does A-line. the thing if you. LinkedIn, like, literally everyone yeah. has one. If you open X and you just swipe up mm. through, like, you open up a video and you swipe on mobile, it does like a TikTok style yeah. feed. It's between kind of like random videos and random tweets. So it's not even close to it, but it, it's a rough enough approximation of the. TikTok experience that mm. makes me think like, you know, if X can make it happen on a basic level. Yes, where the anyone con- can. Where the content is kind of at least vaguely in the realm of something I might want to watch. Mm. You know, I don't know. But but the point is, it's kind of like, my thinking is that if a buyer is sitting down and they're looking at this deal, and like there are a few reasons why a buyer might want to do it. Mm. A, because they want one. But B, you would think that a big company could get away with acquiring TikTok without too much antitrust scrutiny. Yeah, except for Facebook. Except for Facebook. Facebook. Like Meta. Yeah, Meta might get a bit of heat. Mm. Like I feel like the FTC might be. Google also. I think I feel like those two, I'd be surprised if they're even inquiring. Meta in particular. Like I don't think that Facebook yeah. are even bothering. They're not going to, yeah, they, they wouldn't pass muster. You're right. But it's kind of like someone like Microsoft could probably get away Absolutely. with Absolutely. You know. But uh, yeah, which I think before we get onto the speculation, which I know does tie in because it's like if you don't get the algorithm who is actually capable of like putting in um, a decent algorithm, let's pause on that for one sec But because I want to go back to your point about do you just get the US site because that's a weird one, right? It's like if it's literally TikTok US that's spun off, what happens there? Okay, so is it a whole separate user base? So you're basically buying the user base of and the accounts or whatever and like TikTok US is its own thing. People in America are just seeing American shit. And then down here in Australia, we're seeing rest of world. You know what I mean? Like us and the Europeans and New Zealand and as like Philippines. I don't know. You know, yeah, I mean, like, this are we was... just seeing that doesn't feel normal. <laughs> <laughs> to what to have to say everything but America? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's a very weird situation. No, what totally. China, because because also, well, two things. A, you can imagine tr- the Europeans and Australia will probably follow America. Like once America say yeah, well, like it's well, banned, that, we'll do the same thing. That's the thing. thing. Like Al- Albo kind of signaled, he was like, we're not necessarily going to follow them, but we are keeping a very close yeah. eye on things. But you would think that like that's an easy win in the US-Australia alliance. Yeah. Just be like, all right, you guys think this is a serious thing and you've followed through and there's enough pressure locally as well that potentially something would happen. Yeah. There was definitely a big – it was very funny because there's you, you see a bit of content on – TikTok about the ban or whatever, especially ahead of it. Mm-hmm. And there was a big sort of argument between people as to like, between people that were like, Americans being like, you're going to fucking miss us. And the rest of all being like, you guys are only 180 million out of the billion TikTok users. We're not going to fucking miss you. But I hate to hand it to the the Yanks. Yeah. They, do, they punch above their weight in terms of like content output and quality. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, they, they are a nation of content creators yeah. and have been since the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> like, <laughs> got, a, got a hand to them, folks. Well, yes. I mean, I don't think it's like a big claim to say that most Western entertainment has been influenced by America. <laughs> <laughs> like, totally. You lose all the Los Angeles TikTokers. Yeah. And th- these people are a real... Otherwise, you're just going to get fucking Londoners doing the like, just got back from the chippy, look at this. Yeah. You know, when they do their fucking... They film themselves getting like... English style Chinese. Have you seen these videos? <laughs> no, I've not seen these videos. So you know, like when you go to, when you go to get Chinese in London mm, or whatever, yeah, it's like honey chicken rice, but then also just like chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curry, they got chips with cu- everything. Curry sauce. Yeah, and these guys been like taste test, 
down me local chippy, down me local Chinese. That's what all of TikTok will be if the Americans are banned. It does sound dog shit. But, I mean, obviously <laughs> they're like – the other option is that there is some kind of like agreement, right? So it's like we sell off US TikTok, but you guys own the advertising platform and like the content and whatever, but there's some kind of link between – US TikTok and yeah, rest of world TikTok where yeah, like you, you, the be, content is still like aggregated yeah. or whatever. What are you telling me is it becomes Mastodon, a federated <laughs> a federated Mastodon. Imagine system. that. Imagine if the Fediverse was actually, that's real orthogonal, right? That's real disruption. It's like actually TikTok. That would be huge. If the Chinese were like, you know what? We're federating it. You can all run it on your own servers. <laughs> and like and you all get fed into this TikTok. <laughs> that, that would be funny. <laughs> Maybe it will work. You own yeah, data portability. Like the, the, You've got all the users. You've got their emails. You've got all that sort of shit. Yeah. We still control the algorithm because that, that controls like the feeding and across the whole yeah, yeah. Fediverse. But everyone owns their own data, yeah, full yeah. data portability. If, we, if you want, you can, as an Australian, we can stay here on like TikTok.oz or you can move, like I can be like MrSydney.au or I can move to <laughs> MrSydney.us. You know, I can jump around. Wow, see, that, that's freedom, folks. Yeah, that, maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe all these, like, deep south Republican senators were like, no, I've looked at Mastodon and that's, that's what I want with my TikTok. <laughs> this is genius. This is, this is a great concept. Um, anyway. Yeah, sure. Anyway, so that's just a weirdness, I think, that has to be resolved, whether you've just no, well, that's, got, that's we've a- got balkanization or, like, federization. Yeah. I, know, I hadn't considered the second, the latter option, but, you know, here we are. Well, yeah, there's that. Um, but keeping in mind through this entire conversation, and obviously part of this is posturing, but, you know, Reuters reported that TikTok said they would rather shut down yeah. their US operations than sell them. Yeah, I'll kill myself before <laughs> I ever... I will literally kill myself. <laughs> Um, if I can't have these these teens, <laughs> no one can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so c- keep in mind in the background they don't want to do any of this allegedly. Mm. But it's still, yeah, it comes down to what's actually valuable. Yeah, and, and I think that this comes back to the down round hypothesis that – Absolutely everything is affiliate marketing. It's affiliate marketing, yeah, exactly. Like everything is email lists. Just, ima- just imagine a world where Microsoft buys TikTok, but they're doing it just so they can, <laughs> they can get a bunch of emails. Yeah. That's basically what we're talking about, right? Because if, if they're not going to get the algorithm, obviously oversimplifying, if they're not going to get the algorithm, again, someone like Microsoft, and l- let's put out the key players here. You've got the obvious ones. Facebook, as I said, let's just write them off straight away because for antitrust meta. reasons. They won't, they won't do meta. it. Yeah, meta, meta. They, meta will be delighted if TikTok is just out of the game. That's, oh, yeah. That's they, what they've been lobbying for. They'd be agitating for, they'd be saying to the Chinese, yeah, do it. You know, just fucking cut it. Just, like, just kill it, Just, just get, pull the plug. Wouldn't, wouldn't it feel fucking good? Just, yeah. to, just get it out Exactly. I mean, they'd obviously be able to like like for like replace the algorithm straight away. But yes, they're not going to be able to buy it. And they've, uh, they've been lobbying for this forever. Yes. Like they'd be loving whatever's going on. Yeah. So that's fine, and they'd you know they'd probably be happy if it went to Microsoft or something, and they can because they know Microsoft's not going to fucking beat us in social. That's yeah. just not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Google um, is another one that would find it very easy to just like for like put in the Google, you know, the YouTube thing. But again, I don't think that they're going to be allowed to do it. Like, they, it wouldn't be able to. But but YouTube's a good one where it's like surely they must have the guts of. And I know that there's shorts, but shorts is so demented, I can't really tell. No, but what, even just the, the – just the we're talking about is a, it's, it's a re, yeah, a recommendation algorithm is no, what we're and, talking about. And they, they literally invented the concept of having that kind of yeah. video recommendation algorithm. But again, yes, antitrust, would, would they be able to integrate TikTok into YouTube as they would? Mm. I don't know, potentially not. But it doesn't seem like they're even on the table right. thinking about it. Yeah. Although, <laughs> true banter outcome. Google acquires TikTok and shuts it down <laughs> nine, <laughs> nine, nine months later. <laughs> nine months later. <laughs> yeah. No, no, sorry. Renames it nine months later. Yeah, renames, and it, then shuts renames it. it three months after that and then two weeks later <laughs> shuts it down. They, they rename it to Google Plus, Google Plus Video <laughs> and then they shut it down. <laughs> yeah. Or sell it to Squarespace or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah something like, like split off, they sell the algorithm yeah, yeah. and they just like, yeah, no, nah, we're shutting it down. It's done. <laughs> so sunsetting it as of a four. We, we gave it a go. It only got 100 million users. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, then, but Microsoft is the kind of big, obvious one for many reasons. One, they have an ad network. Okay, at the end of the day, like the parameters here are like, this is an advertising play, right? Like you want to sell ads. 
that's how TikTok makes money. Ads. Yes, they have all of the other bizarre monetization things that come and go. But at the end of the day, it's an advertising platform. You need someone who has an ad network. I mean, you don't need to. It could be fucking anyone. It would be most suitable. For someone who can, yeah. Can... And Microsoft has a big ad network from Bing to LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You know, they have, you can advertise. Xbox, a... like they've got, they, they have something that, that works across here. Totally. And like even like Netflix, for example, uses Microsoft to serve ads as they like programmatic, well, it's not fully programmatic yet, but, you know, yep. Microsoft are their ads partner because they're able to kind of plug this ads network into um, digital products. And, yeah, they don't have a big kind of social play for normal people. LinkedIn, you know, being, and I guess Xbox, though, we've discussed, has kind of social features. Minecraft has massive social features. Microsoft makes a lot of sense. It makes it's probably the most sense out of anyone. It does, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they were one of the top contenders back when Donald Trump initially banned it mm. you know lots of reporting suggesting that they were relatively close to to sealing the deal like and they were actually at the table it still has the stink of i mean it's, it's a classic kind of like microsoft opportunist play right yeah because as i kind of alluded to before i feel like they are someone where it's like you know the government the ftc might look at it and be like no oh, this is almost a antitrust problem for us because yeah. keep, keep in mind the general vibe right now is for antitrust. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, big the, tech can't acquire anything. B- big tech can't acquire anything. Hence why weirdness like open AI and yeah, stuff the stra- happens. The strange deals that are going up there. And as Kyle Harrison talked when we interviewed him a few, a few weeks ago, he was talking about, you know, now they're considering maybe these bizarre AI deals are probably an antitrust problem. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, they, given that they are invented to skirt around antitrust, let's so, be perfectly Oh, frank. and like the FTC just banned uh, non-competes mm. in the US la- uh, last week. I'm pro that. No, for the, for the I, I, think, I think it's great, but like that is keep in mind that like twenty percent of American workers are bound by a non compete. Yeah, yeah. People like like Amazon have it for like warehouse factory workers, and they litigiously pursue them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like they are famously a big deal in Silicon mm-hmm. Valley. Yeah, and there's been lots of like bizarre antitrust, anti competitive behavior with all the the various tech companies acting in a cartel with labor. You know that classic. Um, there's that email with uh, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs email and the Adobe, Adobe, the Adobe yeah. being like, you know, I thought we had an agreement that we weren't going to hire each other's staff. Who needs to change our policy or whatever? Yeah. And, and it's always funny when like, everyone looks at that email and there's always replies from like blue tick tech guys that are like, badass. <laughs> and they're like a million people being like, that email was like insanely illegal. Yeah, yeah. And they that, all- that was literally <laughs> used as evidence that find them both a shitload of money. An for unbelievable being- amount of money for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, hell yeah, that's that's shark shit. That's killer. It's like that cost Apple like $400 million. <laughs> anyway, um, but the point is antitrust is in the air. Mm. So you got to plug it in. But I feel like, you know, if this does go through and does happen. They like Microsoft over there. Like, you gotta, like Microsoft are hand in glove with, let's be honest here, folks, the deep state. No, but actually, because that, oh, like, yeah, yeah. it the, fundamentally the deep, runs all of America. Oh, the, deep, the, the deep state, uh, they have got Office 365 subscriptions. <laughs> well, this is the thing, though. Like, <laughs> the Department of Defense, the Pentagon is run off Microsoft, right? Like, as in, they are literally, they have to be because, you know, there's nation states trying to find Azure and exploit so that they can, you know, take down God knows what. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know how, like, uh, there was that big protest at Google the other week, yeah, a, a whole bunch of staff who all got fired. Mm. There was like thirty or forty people got fired because they did a sit-in about Google doing contracts with the IDF. Mm. Meanwhile, every bit of lethal equipment that my, that the US uses, yeah, like it's fucking running Windows. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like, even though there's some antitrust stuff around Microsoft, they love Microsoft owning stuff, it's, especially when it. Well, especially in the realm of like things of national security importance. Yeah. Right. Um. So uh, anyway, but. Uh, I feel like, generally speaking, they're going to be the, the touch will be a bit lighter if this what if this what goes through. Especially, it's kind of like someone needs to acquire this. Yeah. And when you think about it, who has the capacity to buy even just America uh, TikTok's American operations? Yeah, yeah. There'd be a very small handful of companies. Totally. Because that'll be huge. Yeah. So the other players are well, Oracle. I don't, like, I mean, I don't know if it's worth just that. Would be a disaster. For, it's just for TikTok just, US. That would just be. Oracle know nothing about running a social. The the only thing I can think is like they may they create like a new. They keep everyone on board. Yeah, they, they keep everyone like they create a new like shell company within Oracle that has like a different kind of. But again, like how where is that supposed to fit in, with literally the most boring corporate culture, in America probably. Yeah, which it has to be. It's fucking database software. No, exactly. Which, <laughs> well, yeah, 
Which also in like server software that has been yeah. drag kicking and screaming into the cloud era. And the like pretty much like all of their customers are just people who used to have on-premises Oracle servers, as in like big stacks in the data room that were like Oracle who had to move onto the cloud and so like are still Oracle customers. Like that's basically the well, can you can you imagine like a fucking Oracle C suite meeting where they're like, okay, we've ju- we've just talked about the Okay, we're building this new data center in North Dakota. We're also we're shifting our pricing strategy for enterprise clients of over 150,000 seats. Um, also, the issue has arisen that uh, eating disorders are becoming a serious problem on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing about like what? What's kind of the what? What's the stance? How yeah. can we tackle this? Could you imagine like you know remember the Tide Pods craze? Could you imagine the new one of them being brought up in a Oracle board of directors? <laughs> They're like, have you heard about the ice bucket challenge? You're like, oh, the ALS thing. It's like, no, there's a new one. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's way worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about like weird processing fees on like point of sale, like yeah. database technology. Yeah, if we can take two cents off every transaction that I, and that versus... 14-year-olds are doing the yimmy yayo. You don't want to know what that is. You do not want to know what that is, but it does involve a sum of in love. <laughs> and there's 150 million of them in the last seven hours. Yeah, I get, I get it. It's like what? I think like they don't have an ad network no. that I know of. I mean, it's one of those businesses where they may have a thriving, you know, $3 billion a year ad business, but I don't think so. But, like, where does it even remotely fit? Obviously, they have a very close relationship right now via the Project Texas stuff, Mm. the auditing, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. No. Unless it was a real case of, like, the U.S. security state being, like, you are buying them. (laughs) Yeah. Getting on the phone to Larry Ellis on his fucking yacht and being, like, guess what, buddy? Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever that, the NBA commissioner quote. So yeah, Oracle. I'm going Oracle. To, whatever. It's, wait, a, it's it, absurd, but whatever. The interesting one that people keep floating is Amazon, and to a lesser extent, Walmart. But like Amazon first. Amazon kind of makes sense. They have AWS, obviously. Like they have the servers. Yep. They have the tech capabilities to again. They could spin up an algorithm. They're, well, they're running up their AI investments hugely. Yeah, um, totally. Uh, exactly. They have the infrastructure to be able to... They don't have a social network. No. And they also have... I mean, the Amazon is the third biggest ad network in the world yeah, after it, Google and Facebook. And like, imagine, I mean, turning TikTok shop into an Amazon shop front is like an obvious play. Like there's a bigger thing here with, as we've discussed since episode one, basically, on Downround... Apple's ATC, App Tracking Transparency, which makes it much harder for advertisers. You see an ad on Instagram or wherever, Facebook no longer knows that you've purchased it when you open up a new app and then purchase it. It, They used to know, they don't anymore because Apple. If you have a closed loop like Amazon, like Amazon knows if they show you an ad, whether you click on it and buy it, because it all happens within Amazon. If they have TikTok and they're able to pump their ad network into TikTok, then they can close that loop, which means better targeting, better attribution, Advertising gets better, plus more inventory, like more spaces for people to buy advertising. So it does actually make a lot of sense from like an Amazon perspective, like closing that advertiser. Yeah, yeah. And it it gets them into that like Chinese e-commerce video kind of thing that they don't really have. Totally. The social selling shit. The social selling stuff, which, you know, they, they, Amazon absolutely owns affiliate marketing in the West Mm. for sure, just in terms of like blogs and all that kind of stuff, but they haven't really, they don't have that kind of like social presence except mm. through like Facebook ads and, and what have you. So I, it could be a, a, an intro for them. But again, it's kind of like, I don't know, Amazon really struggles with everything consumer level. Yeah. That isn't just like a shop front for various things. Oh, I mean, try to attach your kind of Kindle to your Audible. And it's just an absolute nightmare. Yeah, so, uh, totally. I the mean, buttons are still those fucked, like, oval ones with, like, shadows and a gradient over them that are tiny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, No, it's it's not good. I you like have it. to go through, like, nine different kind of screens that are all evidently in, like, they really show their back end, you know, on a lot of things. Like, they really are, like, link account. Like, you see, like, databases, like, creating links and stuff just by, like, oh, yeah, why you, have I had to, like... You can really see the scaffolding on, yeah. like, everything that Amazon does. I feel like, you know, I assume there are people in our audience who use Amazon Music. But every time I've looked at it, I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is this? Yeah. Like, I assume I have it because I have Prime. Prime, yeah. And I believe it's included. Yeah, I think it and is. And I, I yeah. imagine it has every bit of music ever recorded. Yeah, yeah. But I look at it and I'm like, 
it's literally like someone's like uploaded their album to GeoCities. It looks like Last like, FM. It, yeah, it's like Last FM. I've never seen an ad for it. They've never really pushed it. Mm. I'm, I'm sure they have in the US. Amazon would not be able to run a Spotify. This is like a different sort of thing. Mm. They wouldn't be able to do what is required to be Spotify, mm. who obviously just had great earnings. Yeah. And they're constantly innovating or yeah. need to, the perception they're innovating. You think Apple Music is fucking bad at doing their yearly wraps. Mm. Imagine uh, looking at a Prime one. Uh, they, God, Amazon they, Prime rap? <laughs> oh, my God. They, ma- they mail you the receipt. <laughs> Of every song you've listened to over the past 365 days. <laughs> yeah. And like the songs all just have like a like a skew number underneath them. <laughs> just like a 64 digit like. And you number. go and you type it in, and you're like, oh, that was the new, the new Taylor Swift. <laughs> and and I, I actually think I'm pretty sure Amazon is something around like in America, the um market share of the streaming services is very different to Australia because yeah. Amazon has like a, a greater share. It's Way like a probably. double digit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I think People who all have Prime over there. And, and you so, may as well just... Because it makes sense to use it. It's just, yeah. No, it's, and obviously YouTube Music has a bigger share, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, at least YouTube Music seems to have a much nicer consumer interface. Again, if you're if you're an Amazon Music subscriber, let us know in the comments. But <laughs> yeah. when it comes to, like, consumer-facing oh, no, businesses... Can you imagine it, all of a sudden they'd look at the TikTok UI and they'd be like, wait, it's how many kilobytes to have, you know, these gradients, this, you know, th- these curves? Get rid of the curves. We can save 0.0003 cents per session on not having that gradients. Like, let's just let's just do that. Let's just do that. Make the UI flat. In fact, why don't we just give them 10, 10 blue links on like a plain mm. HTML style sheet? And what are through. all these animations? <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah. I, it, why does it smoothly go between videos? Why don't just <laughs> <laughs> why don't just like click? You know. Anyway, that's. Point is, they're not. Then they've never been great at that kind of consumer business. I mean, fucking look at Alexa; they've pumped like thirty billion dollars into that over the years. Yeah, yeah. Someone pointed out on Twitter that, like, at the I don't know, I think it was in an article, at the peak, the Alexa team had like ten thousand people working on it. That's impressive for a product which had its time in the sun for yeah, sure, yeah. but didn't really. I mean, you know, we, we went. Well, it's, it's now it's now unusable, right? Because it just like randomly gives you ads. Yeah. You ask it to do something. It's like, have you thought about buying some more milk? <laughs> but this, like, yeah, this, this was like a $10 billion a year business mm. with like, as I said, 10,000 employees. It's substantial is what I'm saying. But anyway, it makes sense, but would they be able to do anything mm. with it? I don't know. It the, just yeah. really doesn't seem like that kind of thing. The left field one was Walmart, as I said. Yeah. Again, I don't really want to – we don't know that much about Walmart here, obviously, but like I don't want to entertain it that far the same reason as amazon close the loop walmart do have a, a big growing ad network and you know they've got shops that amazon do but are doing unsuccessfully and a shit and just a shitload of money as well shitload of money huge company growing advertising network they'd have they'd probably have a little bit more difficulty like whipping up an algorithm but you know I'm, with enough money i'm sure you can you can get make it, it up done. i know that they they have had a bunch of like digital initiatives over the past little mm. while and have acquired various little things, I believe, to try to build out some sort of like Walmart online. Sort yeah, of. they they is it Vizio, like an ad network? Yeah. They got a lot of money. I'm sure they could get it done. Yeah, but, but and, uh, and they also have a they have a, a marketplace like Amazon, like anyone can list on Walmart, etc. But again, when it comes down to it, it's like what as you said before, anyone who buys it has to be thinking, okay, A, can it bolster our existing social media platform, that's kind of automatically out because if you have a substantially large enough social media platform that you want to like expand it, mm. you know, even when you think about it, it's like how many people would you be get, would Meta even be getting? Yeah, true. That aren't already on Reels? Very few. I feel like the list of people who are Reels only and don't never open TikTok can't be that big. There's some boomers. I mean, there'd be boomers, but I think time and time again, Facebook Meta has shown that like, they don't want to be accumulating more of those people. They would rather get some of the people they've lost to TikTok back. Yeah, and well, they want engagement minutes, though. I don't know if, if even users is the way to be thinking about things yeah, yeah, or yeah. not. I mean, although, as I said, like all you're really getting with TikTok is a bunch of users, but user behavior as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So you either want that, you know, there's also, there are people that I guess maybe want the algorithm if that's on the table, but, you know, that seems up in the air. And then aside from that, it's like we have a gigantic diversified like e-commerce product line that we want to be able to basically pump in front of people's eyeballs. We've got an ad network or we don't and we have 
you know, this is this is part of us building an ad network. Yeah. You know, Shopify or something, but if they had the cash, they've also got to have the cash, right? Yeah, yeah. and like Microsoft, I think is kind of like a bit of column A and column B in that, yes, they want to get their ad network in front of people. As we've said before, they don't really have a consumer social media network. Mm. They've got like pieces of one spread across various apps, but it's not really the same thing. I know it's tough. Like even looking at everything we've just said, I don't think any of them, it's so obvious that they should have TikTok in whatever... Yeah package it gets given to offered to them yeah especially with all of the headaches of social media right like people like microsoft are, are able to kind of fly beneath the radar you're bringing the same scrutiny that all these platforms that basically led to elon musk buying x because all of a sudden you're going to get yeah some guy from north carolina being like why are they saying that like blackface is wrong on tiktok or whatever you know yeah, like well, well exactly it was like uh, do, does microsoft then want to get immersed in sort of the muck of being like, oh, what do we show of the Gaza conflict? Yeah, like exactly. I mean, yeah, sure. It, I'm sure they deal with this stuff on LinkedIn, but it's not oh, I mean, remotely the same they're scale. Not, they're not being dragged in front of Congress like over, yeah. No, like the LinkedIn, LinkedIn has- stuff on LinkedIn. Uh, no, totally. Has has uh, has totally eluded that. Yeah, it's, it's a big question. It's like, yes, the China thing will go away, which has sort of dominated the mm. TikTok conversation. But there's a lot of other shit that people have gotten arced up at TikTok about. Yeah. Like as we- kind Constantly. Of, constantly. There's every time like, you know, the people doing challenges that endanger themselves. Yeah. You know, um, the same sort of social media stuff around political influence. Mm. Like does Mark, does Satan Nadella want to sit there and suddenly be like, you are like swaying the election? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, no, I just- you know, I sell word processes. <laughs> exactly. I believe on like a platform for platforms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to answer these questions. I don't know what the number of videos with hashtag bulimia are. Like, I don't. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to be. Like, that is the last thing he wants to be asked. Yeah, totally. It's like you've you've got me over barrel thinking about gamers. <laughs> I got to get up in front of my quarterly earnings and talk about gamers, and now you're asking me to think about eating disorders. <laughs> But I guess down around prediction from my side, probably Microsoft. That's my guess. I don't buy China will actually throw the toys out of the cot and be like, no one's having it. it. I I just, there is the complication, like unless it's literally just like we can't reach a deal because like it's too complex to split off. Like that question of splitting off the US from the rest of TikTok slash some kind of integration, like that could literally just be like we can't resolve it. Like it's too weird because like then you know do microsoft want tiktok but only for the us but as you say then does do they change its name and try and expand globally and then we all join the clip champ here in australia because and we've still got tiktok but like clip champ ha- has- i think i think they should brand is so they'll keep clip champ as the video editing thing but they'll call this clip champ vids with a z <laughs> yep clip champ vids yeah then that's a good brand um and it's got kind of like a they've used most of the like Blues and purples they could possibly use. Mm. Blues, purples, greens, oranges. I still think that it being Teams vids, Teams vids, and it's just literally like everyone who has TikTok, it converts to just Teams, and all of a sudden everyone's just got Teams on their phone. On their phone, yep. And like it'll open up to the vids screen, but you can just scroll over to the, to the to-do list. That's just good. And all the mutuals you currently had on TikTok. And community. I just turned into a cha- like a Teams group. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Teams a group. Team. Yeah, like, all of a sudden, it's a team. Obviously, full integration with 365. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next, next thing you know, you're, you know, one minute you're scrolling TikTok and seeing what cool new videos are up. Next thing, you're sitting in a Teams chat. Someone's yeah. tagged. Dun, dun, someone, dun, someone, dun, dun, <laughs> someone dun, comes through. Someone's tagged you in like an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Be like, you just look at these. These numbers don't make a whole lot of sense to me. <laughs> That'd be great as well. And like, if you can, you leave your comments as. Can you leave your edits as edits so I can see them? <laughs> you got to change to editing. If you could, like, if you're a creator as well and you want to, like, look at your stats, yeah, it just opens up like a Power BI dashboard that's linked to an Excel document. <laughs> that's great. It's, it makes sense. <laughs> it just makes sense. If you're listening to this, have I got an offer for you? Mm. Imagine this, but twice a week and without any interruptions. 
no interruptions, no ads, two episodes a week. Yeah. Sounds pretty good to me. There is a world in which this is possible. Yep. If you go to downround.net, seven bucks a month. Seven bucks a month. That's not a week. That's seven bucks a month. Extra episode, no ads, hang out with the lads. Yep. That's me and you. Uh, you can hang out with our audience perhaps soon. Who knows? Of which the gender breakdown is different to the gender breakdown at the table here. Sex <laughs> breakdown. Okay. That went off the rails. That was, <laughs> that went over. Keep it short and punchy the way we currently is. <laughs> Let's no longer talk about gender. <laughs> we can't talk about gender. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs>